Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Baseball Plus. Today we're going to be looking at a game that originally came out in the 70s, but has since been redone and revised. And that is this game right here, Title Bow 2, made by the same designer of the original, Jim Trunzo. So it's been updated and uh, streamlined a little bit. And so we'll go to the table, we'll take a look at what all you get with the game, how it works a little bit, and maybe box a few rounds. And I'll give you some of my thoughts on it as well. So I'll see you at the table. Okay, so let's take a look at the board that you get with the game. It'll kind of remind you a lot of the Status Pro board from way back when. All the tables on the, on the board, cut table, uh, foul table, which has actually been revised. Uh, you can go to the website, strapejabmedia.com, and print it off for free. And referee tables also been revised. Uh, as we pan up here, you've got uh, the scoring table, and this has been this is a little. There's a little revision here. If you're using the round by round system, uh, it's just the high score of the round wins the round. If you're using the ten point must system, you'll follow everything that's in this column. If you're Wanting to know the time of a knockout or keep time of, the, of a round for whatever reason, uh, you'll just count out the number of cards you've used and it'll give you the time of the round. Uh, the technical knockout table, knockdown recovery table. Uh, here's the ring, keep track of the action, where things are going on in the ring. Uh, the points per round and within the round. Um, <clears throat> you'll, you can keep track of uh, the different boxers points within the round here. Knockdown knockout table is over here. So that is a look at the board. Very nicely done. And you'll also get these player tracker boards or boxer tracker boards. Uh, keep track of cuts, uh, you know, swelling, injuries, common injuries, uh, fouls committed. You want to keep track of that on here. Well, if you want to keep track of that, you can do it on there. You also get all these the little chits to put on the different locations on the board. They don't come in these bags. I just I've kind of bagged them up to, and separated them out a little bit to keep better track of them. Instead of digging through a pile of chits every time I need to find something, I kind of put them in these. These are actually just um, baseball card sleeves that I stuck in there and folded them over and taped them. Uh, if you had little baggies that'd be even better. So you get all those two. You get I talked about strategy cards. You get uh, or strategy in within the game and these are the strategy cards that you can play. You can play it before the round. You can actually if some things aren't going your way you want to change something up you can play it during the round also. But it's not a guarantee that your fighter is going to be able to carry out the strategy. Each fighter is going to be rated as far as their effectiveness to carry out each strategy. And these little symbols here, F-O-C-U, F-I, um, K-O, they're on the boxer cards and you will draw a random number and see if that number is within that range. If it is, the fighter will be able to carry out the strategy for that round. If it's not, well, then he's not going to be able to do it. You'll also get the boxing action cards. 50 cards per round you'll turn over. You get a stack of 100. Now they have since, or Jim has actually come out with newer cards they are bigger and they have more information on them. Those tables that on the back of the rule book, these tables are actually going to be on the back on the cards, the new cards, the fast or the boxing action cards as they call them. Those tables will be on there so you don't have to look those up. Um, <clears throat> like I said, you get 50. If you don't like the smaller ones, you can order the newer ones that are. 12 bucks for a hundred and you'll go through 50 per round 
You'll also get a hundred boxers. They're the heavyweights. Anywhere from Joe Lewis to Mike Tyson. They're all in here. All rated. As you can see, there's Lennox Lewis, Joe Lewis, Tommy Morrison, Jerry Quarry, Leon Spinks. So let's take a look at I'll pull out a couple boxers here that we're going to use as an example. Move these out of the way. We've got Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes. Before I go on though, there are 15 fighters that have had revised cards made. One of them is this Muhammad Ali card. And that's his revised card. The, the one that doesn't come in with the game. And now you can go to the website again and download those cards and print them off for free or if you want to order them and kind of they'll come out exactly like this you can order them for one dollar so pretty good deal there either print them off for free for your, yourself or uh, order them for a dollar your choice is yours and you don't have to have the new boxing action cards either you can use these to come with the game the smaller ones I think within few, with future versions of the game, they will be the bigger ones, though. They will not be these smaller ones. So if you intend on ordering this game, you will probably get the bigger cards anyway. But if you want to order additional cards to where you don't have to you know, shuffle every two rounds, you can uh, order some more. So let's take a look at the cards. <clears throat> this number up here... 10 for Ali, 9 for Holmes. Those numbers are basically an overall rating of the fighter and his card. <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean that um, if you had two 10s that they're going to be equal. One could be a high 10, one could be a low 10. Then you'll come down here to special. These, ta these uh, traits here will affect the match about they're both the same though intellect and strong closer strong closer means that the last two rounds are going to be a little more in control or have the opportunity to be a little more in control the first thing you're going to do before you get about started is you're going to look at this up here it means he is a boxer b is boxer okay so cfb slash s control factor versus boxer versus slugger control factor versus a boxer is 10 for Ali control factor versus a boxer for Larry Holmes is an 11 so then you will go to the instruction booklet and in here there are revised control factors so we have an 11 versus a 10 so Holmes is going to be a 10 Ali's going to be a 9 when we're looking at the control factor, it's going to be a 10 versus a 9. Okay, now who starts out in control? That's what you want to know first. So you'll look at the aggressiveness rating. They are both 7s. Since they are both 7s, the one with the highest rating, overall rating, will start out as the boxer in control. Okay, so you count out your 50 boxing action cards. And let's take a look here. I'll move that over here and we'll put it right there. So since we already know all these in control, we'll go straight to the random number, which is a 27. That means it falls within the punches landed section here. First of all, you need to check the defense for the other fighter. He's a minus two, so that's going to subtract two from here. Make it a 33 instead, or a 32 instead of a 34. 27 is still in the range, so he has landed a punch. The result is a 20. So he lands the punch, or it is a uh, sorry, it is a two-point jab, and. Now, you don't get these with the game, but I've been using little pawns that I had laying around. 
Oh well, I got some red and blue pawns. Let's use those instead of the chips. So I'm going to use those. <clears throat> so, and it says cut also. So we'll need to check the cut chart and make sure there's not a cut on top of that. So then we will draw another card and look at the random number 28 on the cut chart. Uh, Larry Holmes cut is a one so we'll look under bring it down here one and the random number is 28 so 26 to 30 is blank so there is no cut no cut we continue on and we need to find out who's in control again control factor one Ali was the last person in con last fighter in control, so he remains in control with a one. Random numbers of twelve. Again, that's going to be within punches landed. So he lands a punch, and the result is a three. So it's a three-point jab. Now does Ali stay in control? Yes, another one. Thirty-four. That is not going to be in the punches landing because remember we have minus two for Larry Holmes. So he misses the punch and it's also less than 38, the CP, which is counter punch. If it's 38 or less, Larry Holmes can counter the counter punch. Now for his counter punch to land, you'll add this seven to this 34 and it'll be one to 41. So we get a foul. So Larry Holmes is a C. Flip another card and we get an 11. We come up here. Now this is not the actual table. It's been revised. I think everything's gone up by 10. So instead of 1 to 30, it would be a 1 to 40. I think that's 1 to 50. It indicates no foul. Keep fighting. So we continue on. Okay, so let's see if Ali is still in control. 20, so he is not. Goes over to Holmes, is he in control? He is. He is a 10 and he is, Ali's a 9, remember? So a 9, he's in control. Random number, 43. 43 is punch is missed and it's higher than the counter punch, so no counter punch. Uh, he misses the punch. Does home stay in control? Yes, four. So random number 46, clinching. Does he stay in control? No, 15 is too high. Over to Ali, 18 is too high. Holmes, 18, too high. Ali, nine is good. He is in control, 32. 32 is right on the the threshold of punches landed because Holmes minus two drops him down to a 32 so he does land the punch he has a 41 it's going to be a two point or three point cross for Ali does he stay in control no he does not uh, Holmes 11 too high Nine, Ali is in control. 31, lands the punch. It's a 44, two point cross. And he does not retain control. Holmes does not either. Ali does. 40 is gonna be punches missed. Stays in control though. 75 is ring movement, far ropes. So they move on to the far ropes, which would be like that. Holly's the blue. And anytime a boxer moves another boxer to the ropes, he is going to get plus two to his control factor. So Holly is now an 11. And Holmes is a 10. 
So we got us. We need to see who's on in control. Eight, Ali. And it's a one. So a one is less than this number right here, seven. So we have a possible knockdown. Ali has possibly knocked down Holmes. We'll draw another one, and we'll look at the eleven. KD right there, eleven. And we'll look at his KD number. KD1 number is a 1. And we come down here to the knockout, knockdown table. We go down to 11 and we come down to 4 or 1. Cross referencing with the 11, and it's a 4 point punch landed by Ali. Takes him up to 14. And he stays in control with another 2. 35. 35 is counter punch by Holmes. 55 is not going to be landed. He just clinches. That's clinching. Uh, let's see, the counter punch again was you add the 7 to this, which make a 1 to 41 chance for a counter punch, but he did not land it. So, Ali, does he retain control? 19? No. Holmes is in control. 23 means he'll land the punch. And it's an 18 and a possible cut. So, an 18 is a uh, 22. Or. 18 is a 2, 9 to 22 is a 2, so a 2 point uh, jab, and we got to check the cut on Ali, if there is a cut, he's a 1, and we get a 22, which means no cut, it's going to come up blank up here, barely see it, but it is blank, so no cut, and that is about to the end of the round. I think this is more than 50. I didn't really count them out, but Holmes is not in control. Neither is Ali. Neither is Holmes. That is the end of the round. And Holmes got in a two point punch. 14 to 2 was the scoring in that round, which means that's a point differential of 12. So the high score wins that round 10 to 9. If you're going by the 10 point must system, if you're just going round by round, then Ali wins the round. So that is the basics of title bout two. Um, there's, I'm gonna touch on the strategies right here real quick. Again, the strategy cards, they have these letters here. KO, F1, F1, FO. Okay, so if you pick out, let's say you want to go use this strategy, go for the knockout. You got him staggered a little bit. Then you would follow along what the text says here and do your adjustments. But first of all, before you even, can even think about using it, see where it says KO. You will know, say Ollie's going to use it. And you look on his card, it says KO6. Let's say you're in the middle of a round, you would pick just a random card and you'll take the second number of the random number in this case is the 31 so you take the one if the one is less than this six which it is he can use this strategy if it happened to be a seven or higher then he would not be able to use the strategy even though you picked it out you would not be able to use it until the next round Okay, so that's how you use them. The strategy cards. Um, that is the basics of Title Bout 2. Hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to be playing full, full matches, full bouts on the channel. So don't worry. There will be plenty more of this to come. I really enjoy it. Um, I think it's the cards are great. They they're, feel like a regular playing card. It's not... Um, Oh, it's not uh, cards, you know, cardstock type stuff. It's more like a playing card. 
out of a deck of cards. That type of feel, linen, I guess is what it is. So nice. The only the only negative thing that I can really say about this game that I'm not real too keen on is are the chits. You know, I'm I'm not big on those. Um, if it was if this was a dry erase board, that'd be cool. You could just you know mark it however you wanted, and then erase it real quick and easy. A uh, dry erase board would have been really nice, but hey, it might have been more costly. I don't know. But I, that's about it. Other than that, I love the game. And like I said, you're going to see a lot more of it to come on this channel. And if you have any questions, if I did something wrong, which is possible, uh, I'm still learning the game myself. Don't hesitate to let me know. Um, so until the next time we meet with some title about action some real action you guys have a great day take care and god bless